Chapter 16 Then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Sorry comforters are you all. Shall windy words have an end? Or what provoketh you that you answer? I also could speak as you do. If your souls were in my soul's stead, I could join words together against you and shake my head at you. I would strengthen you with my mouth, and the moving of my lips would assuage your grief. Though I speak, my pain is not assuaged. And though I forbear, what am I eased? But now he hath made me weary. You have made desolate all my company. And you have shriveled me up, which is a witness against me. And my leanness rises up against me. It testifieth to my face. He hath torn me in his wrath. He hated me and hated me. He hath gnashed upon me with his teeth. Mine adversaries sharpen his eyes upon me. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek scornfully. They gather themselves together against me. God delivered me to the ungodly and castest me into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease, and he broke me asunder. Yes, he hath taken me by the neck and dashed me to pieces. He hath also set me up for his mark. His archers compass me round about. He cleaveth my reins asunder, and doth not spare. He poureth out my gall upon the ground. He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. I have sewed sackcloth upon my skin, and I have laid my horn in the dust. My face is reddened with weeping, and on my eyelid is the shadow of death. Although there is no violence in my hands, and my prayer is pure, O earth, cover not you my blood, and let my cry have no resting place. Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and he that testifieth of me is on high. Mine inward thoughts are my intercessors. Mine eye poureth out tears unto God, that he would set aright a man contending with God, as a son of man setteth aright his neighbor. For the years that are few are coming on, and I shall go the way whence I shall not return. All right, uh, we will go back up to verse 1. Eliphaz was speaking in the last chapter, in this chapter. Job is responding once again to Eliphaz. Eliphaz is that mighty one of fine gold. He is the Tamani, or the one, those of, from Taman out of the south. That's that witness, that parched place where God has made a witness from before. But he come against Job pretty harshly and speaking, telling Job, you know, you, these things are made plain and, and uh, the, the, the punishment we can see is, is from God. Job said he has seen, or Eliphaz makes plain, he has seen these things and he has declared these things and these things that even the uh, those that are supposed to be wise may have told their children, but no one even having any great wisdom has ever left any behind, or if they have, they've hid it. But we'll find out. All are brought to a place of humility sooner or later, and humbleness either of a humble beginning or a humble end, but humility is something that has to be learned, something that's experienced, see, Humility is something that is experienced. But we're going to go ahead and pick it up here. Uh, we have Eliphaz. He was saying the, these people that are the hypocrites, the un, these ungodly, uh, they're going to be consumed. And we'll find out by the judgment of God. Or these, And we'll find out that uh, the plan of God is that all should have life. All should come to understanding. All should be able to witness and see and we'll and turn, see, in the understanding God has put enough understanding in the earth and enough of a witness that all should be able to have some form of understanding. We'll pick it up here in verse 1. Then Job answered and said, 2. I have heard many such things. Sorry comforters are you all. And Job has said, I've, I've heard a lot of this before. I've 
Job had heard all the understandings that people had, and they, these guys wasn't telling Job nothing. He hadn't heard before, but he's making it known to them, you, you are some sorry comforters. You Instead of coming here to comfort me, all you, they've done is come there and accuse Job, trying to get him to admit to something that he hasn't done. Three, shall windy words have an end? Or what provoketh you that you answer? So, shall windy words have an end? Are you going to be quiet? Uh, what's making you reply? I mean, uh, what what's causing you to speak? And we'll find out. See, the adversary had called these three there together. They come there to, to mentally punish. Not bad enough that Job's in, his, in a physical form of punishment. Now, they're going to come and bring on him a, a mental form of punishment or a mental anguish for I also could speak as you do. If your soul were in my soul's stead, I could join words together against you. They shake my head at you. I also could speak as you do, Job says. I also could sit, sit there and accuse you. If, if, if your soul was in my soul's stead, if you was in the same position I'm in, sitting here suffering, flesh all covered with boils and soreness and sickness, lost everything you got, suffering and son. Job said, I could join words too against you and shake my head at you and sit there and accuse you and say, look at you. You're, you're pathetic. God's punishing you. What a wickedness have you done? That's what they were basically telling Job. Five, I would strengthen you with my mouth and the moving of my lips would assuage your grief. Job said, really though, instead though, what I would do, would I, I would try to strengthen you with my mouth, try to lift you back up and somehow make you feel better. The moving of my lips would assuage your grief. I'd try to comfort you. Instead of here sitting here slapping my lips together, I would speak words of comfort to you. Six, though I speak, my pain is not assuaged, and though I forbear, what am I eased? Though I speak, my, my pain is not assuaged. I don't feel no, my, my speech ain't making me feel any better. And if I shut up, and if I don't speak, if I forbear, how am I eased? How am I made to feel any better? I still am in the same position that I'm in. Seven, but now he hath made me weary, and you have made desolate all my company. But now, God, see, God hath made me weary. He, God is has has allowed this god has done this and you have made desolate all my company these are those that was gathered the gatherings those that was around and these this company even that has, has come here with the words that are desolate even those that would comfort him see are just come there and, and to speak against him eight you have shriveled me up which is a witness against me and my leanness rises up against me it testifies to my face and you have shriveled me up you have withered me away uh, consumed me in other words to be consumed uh, on the inside and the and the which is a witness against me. This this is a witness against me. And my leanness rises up against me. It testifies to my face. And the fact that the the body would be in, in weariness and sickness. And he, Job's lost everything. He's feeling really bad. This is all a testimony. It seems to be a testimony against Job. And it testifies to my face. These things are, are made plain. I can see this. Obviously, nine... He hath torn me in his wrath and hated me. He hath gnashed upon me and his teeth, with his teeth. Mine adversary sharpens his eyes upon me. He hath torn me and ripped in half in his wrath and his this great anger. And hated me, looked down upon me. That's what they call him, Job. He hath gnashed upon me, bitten at me. Like like an enemy, like someone you're fighting with his teeth, like a uh, an adversary, mine adversary, and this this adversary here is uh this one who is causing this distress, this this the distressor, and he sharpens his eyes upon me. He sharpens. He's he's practicing his skills upon me. He's he's 
He's uh, looking upon me with the understanding of destruction. Ten. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek scornfully, and they gather themselves together against me. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. And this is just to open their mouth like a, like a grave against me, to, to open up against, to uh, speak words that well, we'll find out, just like these that are sitting here are doing. They've come against him. They've smitten upon the cheek. That's upon the, on the face. Job, just because Job's sitting there and is suffering, they come upon him and accuse him of, of sinning, slapping him, so to speak. They've gathered themselves against me. They, this, is, this is why they've came. They've come here to, against me. To, 11. God delivered me to the ungodly and cast me into the hands of the wicked. God delivered me to the ungodly and cast me into the hands of the wicked. Uh, uh, God done this. God has delivered Job. We'll find out these ungodly, even those that are sitting there before him, and cast me into the works of the wicked. That they're sitting here punishing him, punishing him more and more. Twelve. I was at ease, and he broke me asunder. Yes, he hath taken me by the neck, and dashed me to pieces. He hath also set me up for his mark. I was at ease. I was at rest. I. This uh, had prosperity. Job did have prosperity. Uh, this and this would be considered easy, he, he, as if Job had everything set in order. He hath broke me asunder. Uh, he has broken these things. It, it don't. This doesn't work. It ain't working like this. And Job no longer has this rest. No, Job is out, been knocked out of his routine, so to speak. He has taken me by the neck and dashed me to pieces. He has taken me by the neck, by the back of the neck, and dashed me to pieces. Or or just like somebody would pick up a bottle and throw it down. That's the kind of the same similitude we would have here. He has also set me up for his mark. Like a target, like a target, something we can just shoot at. 13. His archers compass me around about, and he cleaveth my reins asunder, and doth not spare. He poureth out my gall upon the ground. His archers compass me round about. His archers, these are they're come to shoot their arrows at me. All these ones that come, they've got their little truce they, they, of God. They've come to fire and shoot at me. They all gather around me. They, they have come to destroy. He cleaveth my reins asunder. He cleaveth. He cutteth. He chop it up, just like your reins. These reins are something that you hook to a horse. It's similitude of that which you would hook to a horse. They, they are that which you control with. Your control, this inner control, even that you have, or any control that you would choose. We can, my rules, my orders, my things which I do to control my life or whatever these would be the reins and he cutteth them up he choppeth them up he's taken them away and doth not spare Job seems to be everything's out of control he poureth out my gall upon the ground this gall that innardness of me the inwardness um, my Gall is like my fortitude, or my bravery even. 14. He breaketh me with breach upon breach. He runneth upon me like a giant. He breaks me with breach upon breach, like you would snap a twig, just taking it and breaking it into pieces. Breach upon breach, breaking upon breaking. He runneth upon me like a giant, like someone who is way greater and mightier than me, like a bug under your foot just being crushed God has the he, God is way greater than the man of the flesh there would be no way a man of flesh could even think of contending with God the, the one would be mortal one would be immortal the immortal having the ability to remain the mortal not having that ability 15 I have sewed sackcloth upon my skin and I've laid my horn in the dust I have sewed sackcloth 
this sackcloth is a it's like burlap something that's itchy it's great discomfort this it's sewing this to your skin um being in mourning having this mourning so to speak uh putting the even the flesh in mourning and i have laid my horn in the dust this horn is my strength these these strengths as i have i have tried to put in the flesh to strengthen it back up this horn is a warning even a warning searching that's a um, a form of even of self-warning 16 my face is reddened with weeping and on my eyelids is the shadow of death my face is reddened with weeping I re weeping uh, these tears that are running down this this water that comes from the eyes uh, and it's running down this this red uh, this uh, my face is uh, red with weeping my face is that which makes plain uh, it's made red it's it's worn it's it's be getting sore even from weeping and on my eyelids is the shadow of death and on my eyelids uh, these that open and close those things which I see is the shadow of death that uh, shadow is that which hides the light hides the understanding of of the light a shadow hides the light and it's of death and so there's no understanding in death that we can perceive we we don't know what's going to happen when we die there's no understanding of those things and although 17 there is no violence in my hands and my prayer is pure and even though there i've done no wickedness my Tent has been no hurt. There's no violence in my hand. Not tried to intentionally hurt anybody. And my prayer is pure. And even though the words of my heart are pure, even uh, best intent, 18, O earth, cover not you my blood, and let my cry have no resting place. O earth. Uh, earth is... is that creation of God, it is the creation of God. All things are the creation of God for his pleasure. But the earth is that which is the earth and, and everything in it, even my flesh. Cover not you my blood. Don't hide my blood, my life, that even if there is my sin. And let my cry have no resting place. Let my cry, let my crying out have no place to rest. The, uh, this is a can be continuous, uh, be continuous. This one who is crying out, and we'll find out it, it would be if needed, but for forgiveness. Nineteen. Even now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and he that testified me is on high. And even now, we'll find out. Behold, we can we would be able to look and see. My witness is in heaven, and my witness, or this this one who will testify uh, of me, is in heaven. Or in the greater understandings, and in, in those understandings that are above, we would find out it's it would be God, would would be a creation of God, and He that testifies of me is on high, and He would be the one who testifies of me, because in the end. God is the judge. God is the judge, and it's God will stand before, not man. 20. Mine inward thoughts are my intercessors, and my eye poureth out tears unto God. My inward thoughts are my intercessors. This one who is going to come to try to intercede for me and, and try to, and my eye poureth out tears unto God, and these my my these tears once again are this these this water that is descending from my eyes are these things that I perceive this understanding that is coming down from these things that I can see or what's being made plain the suffering of my flesh and now the feeling that which has been cut off on the inside my intercessor is within me see this one who will plead my cause and plead my case before God he is within me. 21. 
that he would set aright a man contending with God, and as son of man that sets a right, as a son of man sets aright his neighbor, that God would set aright a man who would contend with him. Set aright, make to forgive, see to forgive, just like a son of man or a person, a person would set aright his neighbor, forgive his neighbor. To look over it, to to have forgiveness, to have understanding in your heart that uh, that a human can error, a man can error, and and have no understanding of it. But to have forgiveness, uh, God would have forgiveness even if a man should contend with him. God forbid. Twenty two, for the years that are few are coming on, and I shall go the way whence I shall not return. For the years that are few are coming on. And these years that are few, even the greater understandings, these, those, those that are, uh, a year is the, uh, uh, a sum of many days, uh, many days having many understandings together to reach a greater understanding. And the understandings get fewer, these greater understandings get fewer as we get older even. It seems like for the those things that matter the most are are brought down to the to the true understanding. But they are coming on, and this is the numbering of years. Job says, "I'm getting old. I'm getting old, and my my days are running out. And I shall go the way whence I shall not return. And sooner or later." Uh, would perish. Uh, that's what Job thinks is going to happen to him. Job thinks he's going to die, and he's in that point. He's been brought to the point of death. and His buddies have come all together, and they can't do nothing but accuse Job of sinning. But Job says, I've done nothing, and God's my witness. God's my witness that, that I have had no uh, violence in my hand. We're going to pick it up in 17. Job will continue. Turn and return.